Hi everyone! In this video, I will continue to color page from Minuet de Bonheur, which I started to color on my birthday. And I think that I have to color background first, before I start to color bunnies and flowers. For me, it's much easier to color background, especially on pictures where we have multiple colorful objects. It will be easier for me to decide about brightness of colors for the flowers, for the bunnies, and to decide how much colors I want to use for the rest of the page. But the problem is that I really hate to color backgrounds with colored pencils. You know that my favorable ways of doing background are watercolors or neo colors. But Manuel de Bonheur maybe is the only exception from this rule, because I really love paper in my Japanese edition. So today I want to share with you some of my thoughts, some of my experience of doing background with colored pencils, especially if I plan to use contrast colors. If I need just to color background with one simple color or with color gradient, like from pale blue to dark blue, it's not so difficult. But if I plan to use multiple colors and some of them we can call contrast, like here I plan to use green and pale violet or lilac as basic colors. And these colors are not very similar, so we somehow need to lay them down and to mix them smoothly. So, first thing which I realized for myself and which made my life really much easier is that not each and every paper is suitable for filling huge empty background with color pencils. Some papers are just too smooth and they don't have enough tools and some papers are very soft so they are also not very suitable. Of course you can color backgrounds on such paper but you will need much more time and much more patience than I own so I don't even think about doing background with colored pencils in some of my books. But here in Menuet and in Rhapsody in the Forest I even enjoy coloring background with colored pencils. Next I always try to work with very nicely sharpened pencils and with very light hand. Usually I don't care much about how sharp is my pencil, but for the background the thin tip of pencil is crucial. On the first layer I apply almost no pressure and I just decide for myself where I want to put each color. You can see that I use pale sage and lilac and I slowly decide where I want spots of green and spots of lilac. And here I need to think in advance about how color of my background will match color of the main objects. For example, here around couple of bunnies I plan to leave a very light and even uncolored background around flowers which I plan to do very light and even white I plan to do darker background in order to help them pop up on the background so you have to do some planning before you start to color. Another thing which I wanted to mention and which I notice quite often in works of beginner colorists is if you want to do background through the whole page to use the same color palette like I want to do on this page. Don't use different colors on the both sides of one object. Let me explain. For example, here I have a ribbon 
and I don't want to color the central part as a separate picture. I want the whole page to have the same background. So if I start to color with lilac on the left part of the ribbon, I will continue to color with lilac on the right part also and only then I will switch to green. And it's it won't look good if I color the left area to the left from the ribbon with lilac and area to the right from the ribbon with green. It's not natural, so I try to proceed with the same pencil if I started to color with it around object. The same goes for all branches and leaves. You can see that I try to make natural mixes, natural switches between two colors. After I have decided which color I want to put where and when I am satisfied with my first layer, I start to apply second layer. And if on the first layer I can work even with quite big pencil strokes, taking pencil uh, almost flat to the purple paper surface. On the second layer I try to vary direction of pencil strokes and quite often I work with very small circular movements. And I even can rotate my page in order to vary direction of pencil strokes. Next advice, be sure that your page lay down completely flat. For example here I wasn't that careful, so it was harder for me to color in the area closer to the binding and in this area where page isn't laying completely flat, my strokes aren't very precise and tidy, so strokes were more visible and I wasn't able to get this very smooth coverage. I think that I needed to put something under this page in order to provide more flat surface under my page. So then I start to apply layer after layer and it depends from how much patience do you have and how good is tooth of the paper, how many layers it's able to accept and also from how light-handed are you. Usually I am satisfied with couple of layers. I think that 3 is my optimum. And on the last step, on the last layer, I blend and smooth all pigments together. If I do dark background, I prefer to use my Derwent burnisher. You can use your blender. And if I do light background, just like I have here, I prefer to use white and matching pastel colors from Prisma color set. You will see that here I will mix everything with white, with cloud blue and with pale sage. And the last thing which I always keep in mind that if I wasn't very careful, very attentive and my pencil strokes are still visible and I'm not very happy how background looks, I can always use my neocolor crayons in pastel colors on top of my page and layer of neocolors without water and blend it just with your fingertips usually helps to correct areas where pencil strokes are very visible. I hope that some of these advices will be helpful for you, you will try to use them and this will make this video less boring because it's not very interesting when I just fill in the background with the same colors. I thank you for watching, I hope to see you in the next part. Currently I don't know why, but I don't feel very inspired to color something. 
I start pages, but I don't want to continue and it started exactly after my birthday. I don't know why, but I wanted to switch for my cross stitching projects, but I hope that I will manage to find that inspiration and to finish this page quite quickly. Anyway, thank you for watching and until the next part.